Okay, let's do it. Working with uh, our formula for finding F average and also taking into consideration the mean value theorem for integrals. Um, let's look first uh, at that example there. Consider f of x equals sine of x on zero to pi. Let's find f average. And let's also find the value or values of c in zero pi that satisfy the MVT for integrals. OK. Sounds like a lot of fun. Move over to my paper here. The example said. We're going to think of f of x equals sine x from 0 to pi. Our a was to find f average. OK, so we know. I'll repeat the formula. f average equals 1 over b minus a, integral from a to b, f of x dx. So for us. This would be one over pi minus zero from zero to pi sine x dx. It's just that simple. All right. Well, one over pi minus zero, let's just call that one over pi. All right. Now here, antiderivative of sine x would be negative cosine x, we're going to go from 0 to pi. Okay, let's see. Plugging in pi, cosine of pi is negative 1. So take a negative of that, and you got 1. Cosine of 0 is 1, so that makes it negative 1. Also, 1 minus negative 1 is 2. The f average, the average y value, on that interval for sine x is 2 over pi. Um, yeah, let's think about what that means, like with a rectangle and stuff, just really quick. If you were to graph, we'll just go out to pi. Here's pi, let's say. Here's pi over 2. If you were to graph sine x, right? It, Goes through zero, zero, comes up, peaks at one, halfway through, and does something like that. It's probably a little bit smoother and rounder than what I just did. Okay, notice that for sine x, it stays near the top quite a bit longer than it stays near the bottom. Like it, because it rounds out there, it's up, you know, if you were to think like, what's the halfway point? It gets to the, you know, to 0.5 relatively quickly, and then it stays above 0.5 for quite some time before it drops back below. So that lit, that like makes the average higher. Pi over, two, excuse me, two over pi. Where exactly is that? You know, as a decimal, let's think. Oh, it's about 0.63. So. The average is well above halfway, right? If this is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, you know, maybe up here. So if we were to draw that rectangle, there's the average. Um, and I think, again, yeah, I don't think my drawing is, is the best. I think this should be quite a bit rounder and steeper toward the edges. Because what's supposed to happen is, uh, this this portion is supposed to fill out these portions perfectly so even like half like half of this is supposed to fill this out exactly um so <laughs> maybe it's a little bit lower than what i drew okay maybe something like that so that that would cut this area down a little okay that looks a little bit better in any case it is above halfway kind of the, what i was trying to get at there's two over pi. Okay. This question had a part B. What was part B? Find the values, 
value or values of C on that interval which satisfy the mean value theorem for integrals. Okay, so the mean value theorem for integrals said at least once, but maybe more than once, the function itself will pass through the average. So for us, we can see it's gonna be twice. We're trying to figure out where does that function actually pass through its average. You know, if we wanted to set it up, we could say f of c equals, and we've already done the hard work. We know f average is going to come out as 2 over pi, where what value of c will give a y value of 2 over pi. So we could say, hmm, okay, that would mean that the sine of c, and you could certainly use x here instead to solve. Where is the sine of c equal to over pi? And we just need to take an arc sine, an inverse sine of both sides. Now this, let's go ahead and, and round here. This is not going to be, these are not going to be clean answers. Um, so if we go with inverse sine 2 over pi, at least I don't think it's going to be good. Um, your calculator is going to give you one value. Six, nine, let's go to four places, six, nine, oh, one. Okay. But we recognize that there are two. So our calculator gave us this, or my calculator, six, nine, oh, one. Um, so where is this one over here, right? Um, using inverse sign in the calculator is only going to give one answer. So how do we come up with the other answer? Um, one way to do it, or maybe the only way to do it, is to realize, hey, that means this distance here is the point 6901, and it's got to be symmetrical. So that's got to be the same distance. That's also point 6901. So to find where this is, take pi and subtract that same length. So what's it going to be if I go pi minus that answer, 2.4515, 2.4515. And again, how did I get that with my knowledge of sine and uh, the symmetry and the drawing was certainly helpful. Um, I could think about what that would have to be. There you go. Very nice. Using F average and MVT for integrals. Okay, there is one more example. Let's do it. A little bit different. This one's kind of challenging, but it's fun. It's worth it. For F of X equals X squared minus 6X plus 6 on the interval from zero to B. Find all values of B such that F average equals zero. So what must be the second, the, the upper limit of our integral or the upper limit of the, the interval to where the average would work out to be exactly zero? Let's take a look at the graph. Let me, uh, I'm going to kind of get my bearings here on, on Desmos really quick. Y equals X squared minus 6X plus 6. Okay, I see. So this parabola drops below the X axis and then continues on. Okay, so we see at first, you know, at zero, it's got this positive area. Um, but that might be canceled out by some amount of negative area. So somewhere down here, somewhere along the way, those areas are going to cancel out exactly, and our average y value is going to be zero. There might even be a second time it happens. Like, if what if we took all of this negative area 
So we got some positive area. It looks like this negative area is more than that positive area here. So then we'd have to make up for the rest of the negative area on the other side somehow and get another, oh, interesting. Okay. Let's see how this works out. So we got f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 6 on 0 to b. Find all of the b values such that f average equals 0. OK, I'm just going to repeat the formula again f average equals one over b minus a integral from a to b f of x dx and we'll plug in what we can so we know the average is supposed to be zero um the a value is also zero but we don't know b so we're going to put in one over b minus zero integral from zero to b and we've got our function x squared minus six x plus six Ooh, we got to figure out what B is going to equal. Oh my gosh. That's so fun. Okay. How are we going to start? Well, maybe we can clean this up. Just call it one over V, right? Okay. And let's do this integral. We can do that. So we're going to have one third X cubed minus three X squared plus six X from zero to B. Okay. Now, we'll continue by plugging these in. We'll plug in B for all the X's as if it was a number. That's what we do, right? Subtract, plug in zero, and we'll just kind of see what equation comes out of this. So we'll have one third B cubed minus three B squared plus six B minus, and it so happens that plugging in zero, we got a polynomial, gonna be zero. Looking good. So the minus zero, we can just kind of disregard. Let's distribute the one over B to each term. We'll end up with one third B squared minus three B plus six. Simplifying. Now, if we can solve for B, I, we're gonna be able to do this right. Worst case, quadratic formula. You know what we could do first? I see this one third. Let's multiply everything by three. So we'll have zero here, b squared minus nine b plus 18. Multiplying every term by three, make our life a little bit easier. Hey, will this factor? I think it might now that I see it without the fractions. 18 and minus nine, that's going to be minus three minus six. Look at that. We got two B values. We got it. We solved them. That is pretty cool. B equals three and B equals six um, would cause F average equals zero. Let's see what that looks like graphically. That wasn't as hard as you thought, right? Kind of fun. Back over on Desmos. Okay, let's let's graph the Let's graph zero, right? Because that's where it's that's the lower limit. Let's graph the first other place at three. And it turns out that's exactly where the vertex is. Okay, interesting. So it um it it works out that this area here is exactly the same size as this area here. So those exactly cancel out, which means the average y value from zero to three is exactly zero. You think, huh, man, I wouldn't have not have guessed that. I mean, where is it that it crosses there? Um, you know, from zero to three, the halfway point is 1.5. This is a little bit to the left of that, 1.268. Um, why would that be? Well, because this is so steep, you know, it starts off really high, but it drops really fast. So while these values up here influence the average quite a bit, it drops off really quickly. And it's, you know, because it's rounded out here, these values 
you know, they, they drop the average a lot more um, than these steeper values. And so it's like it's pulling that average down. Okay. Um, so at that point it happens. And then again at six, what's going on at six? Okay, so it's kind of mirror imaging the parabola. So yeah, if we take the other half of this negative area, then it's going to cancel out, you know, with the same size positive area. Um, so at six, all the positive and negative area cancels out again, and we get an average of zero. Hmm. Pretty cool. All right, everybody, that's it. Um, that is 6.5. That's our course. Uh, go check out the homework.